Today's video is taking this dark, dreary, damaged entryway cabinet and giving it a light, airy, spring-inspired makeover for the Spring Fling YouTube Challenge hosted by, well, me. Hello everyone, welcome to the Spring Fling Challenge on YouTube. This is a Pulaski entryway table I found off Facebook Marketplace for $35. It has an applique that is broken, some nicks and dings from regular wear and tear, but we're gonna give it a whole new look that is spring inspired. So think spring colors, spring flowers. We're gonna make this look completely different. It is dark and dreary and we need to lighten this thing up. I am starting this piece with a thorough cleaning. Normally I remove the hardware, but I'm going to leave the hardware on this time and paint over it for the look that I want. I am cleaning with my 50-50 mixture of white vinegar and water. Just spray it down really well, scrub it with a kitchen sponge, and then wipe away the excess vinegar water. I then come back with some regular water and a cloth just to give the piece a rinse to remove that vinegar water mixture. In today's spring fling challenge, we have about 15 to 20 other YouTubers who are participating in this. I will have a playlist in the description. Make sure to watch those videos and comment on this video. Let me know who you think should win. All right, in the before video, I had a little puppy. This is Shanti. She was abandoned in a box. We have rescued her and we are so happy to give her a forever home with us. All right, this cabinet has a shelf that is screwed in, so I'm gonna get to removing that first before we can move on to repairs. All right, let's fix this damage applique. So I'm going to use my dikes to go ahead and cut off the part that's hanging there. And of course, in the process, end up kind of ruining it a little bit more, but don't worry, I can fix that. I lay the cabinet on its back and grabbed a glue syringe and put some wood glue underneath just to glue it back down and then it taped it down and let that dry. These glue syringes were sent to me off my Amazon wish list from Reconstructing Emily. Make sure to go over and like her channel, subscribe to it. Thank you so much, Emily. And a special thank you to Victorian Lady One for buying me my first coffee and a few items off of my Amazon wish list. I truly appreciate the support for my channel. In the description, I always post links of how you can support my channel if you're interested in that. And in the spring spirit, I have hidden a bunny somewhere in this video. So the first person to comment the timestamp of when the bunny pops up, I will pin that comment on this video. Good luck, I hope you can find it. All right, for the applique that is broken, I'm going to make a mold of a good one using hot glue. There are mold kits that you can buy off Amazon to do this with. I don't have any in stock and I do have hot glue, so that's the route that I'm going to take. Plus, using hot glue is a lot cheaper. To do this trick, you have to make sure that you apply a lot of hot glue, so have a thick layer and make sure it goes beyond where your mold is. Let it cool and then you're going to pry it up and then you have a per perfectly made mold. Once the glue had set for about an hour on the broken applique, I went ahead and removed the painter's tape and then set my intention on filling the hot glue mold that I made. To fill it, I am going to use wood filler Bondo. It's a two-part epoxy. Mix it together and then fill it in the little tiny mold that I have, put it into place, tape it down, and then let the Bondo set for about 30 minutes. 
If you are into furniture flipping and repairing and like to learn tips and tricks that I have learned over the last nine years of doing this, this is definitely the place for you to be. So go ahead, like, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you know when I have new videos that come out. When I waited for the Bondo to dry, I used dab plastic wood filler and filled in all the nicks and dings that were on the entryway cabinet. When the Bondo was dry, I removed the tape and the hot glue mold and revealed the Bondo applique that I made, but you can see there's a little bit of excess. So I grabbed a box knife and just cut away the excess Bondo around the edges to clean it up a little bit. All right, I am now an influencer for surf prep, woohoo. My favorite features of my surf prep sander is the squishy foam abrasive pads. The foam abrasive pads mold themselves to the surface that you are sanding. So it makes pieces like these that have a lot of curves and details very easy to sand. Another feature that I really like about my surf prep sander is that it comes with an attachment hose for a dust collector. I use my shop vac to make that happen. I do a lot of sanding in this business and the less dust in my workshop that I can get, the better. And I have to give the customer service at Surf Prep um, some kudos. They have a pretty amazing surface. And just watch here how the foam abrasive pad hugs the lines of the curves. This causes for way less hand sanding and just makes my job faster. After all the scuff sanding, I wiped the dust away with the cloth and then came back with a clean, damp, lint-free cloth to remove any remaining dust residue. For primer today, I am using Dixie Belle's Boss in the gray color. It is a light shade of gray, and I'm wanting to lighten up this piece, so I went with this gray instead of my trusty old Rust-Oleum gray primer that I normally spray. I load this up in my 3M AccuSpray gun and give the piece a coat. However, there was a big hard clump in the primer, so I wasn't able to get a full jar of the Dixie Belle primer and ran out. So you'll see here in a minute, I actually ended up having to use some of my Rust-Oleum Gray to finish the coat of primer. I don't normally like to mix primers like that, but I ran out and sometimes you just have to use what you have on hand to get a job done. At this point, it kind of looks like a hot mess. After the primer was dry, I did lightly sand it with a 220 grit sanding sponge and wipe the dust away. All right, paint time. Let's get some spring colors. This is the color conch, I think is how you pronounce it. And it is Dixie Belle Silk Line. Dixie Belle paint is pretty thick, so I am watering this down so it can be sprayed through my AccuSpray gun. I'm using the pink as a pop of color, so I'm spraying it on the inside of the cabinet, the shelf, and the inside of the drawer. I sprayed two coats of the pink and then let that dry overnight. Before I called it a night, I used, this is the end of a paintbrush and some wood filler. That applique that was broken is also severely cracked and you can notice it really bad whenever I sprayed primer. So I'm just wood filling it in here, let that dry and sand and it looks much better afterwards. I did go ahead and prime a few spots again with the dark gray primer and we have a hot mess express going on, but we'll make it look pretty in the end, I promise. 
The next morning I set my intentions on spraying the outside color that I want to use. Now these have cabinet doors and sometimes you can get paint splatter or spray on the inside. So I tape a line here and I'm using some paper. This is just 8x10 regular paper and I tape it up to kind of block off the crack where the drawers meet in the middle, hoping that that stops any splatter or overspray from spraying onto the pink that I sprayed yesterday. And that little trick actually ended up working really well and I got none of the outside color sprayed over into the inside. For the outside color, I'm using Dixie Belle's Mineral Paint in the color Sea Glass. Just like the silk paint, the chalk mineral paint is also really thick, so I water that down as well to spray it through my gun. Depending on how thick paints are, I usually water it down about 15 to 25% to get this consistency that I need for it to run smoothly through my gun. I end up spraying three coats of the sea glass, letting it dry for a couple hours in between each coat, and then also lightly sanding and wiping away the dust between each coat as well, so I get a nice, nice smooth finish. I wanted to mention quickly that I had posted on social media in the community tab that I was redoing a Hoosier cabinet for this challenge. It ended up being severely damaged, so that will be a video coming up very soon, but for this challenge, I had to pick another piece. Once the final coat was dry, I removed the painter's tape and got a nice, clean, crisp line. I just love whenever that happens. And then did one last final sanding before top coat. This is an 800 to 1000 grit sanding sponge, so it's super smooth. All right, sticking with the Dixie Belle products, I had Dixie Belle's Gator Hide in stock, so I'm going to use that for top coat. This is actually kind of a thicker top coat, so I do go ahead and water this down a little bit as well to make it the consistency to spray well through my gun. For the Gator Hide, I am spraying all the surfaces. So I spray the outside of the cabinet, the inside of the cabinet, the inside of the drawer, the shelf. I put a layer of top coat, let that dry, and then come back with that really fine grade sanding sponge and sand in between coats. I get one coat on there and then we're gonna make more spring on this. This wouldn't be a spring inspired piece without some floral. This is decoupage tissue paper from Redesign with Prima called Neutral Florals. When I was thinking about ideas for this spring fling challenge and what I wanted to do, I found this paper first. So it was my inspiration for my color choice and the style of piece that I did. Working with decoupage paper is pretty easy. You just cut out a size to the area that you want to apply it. And then you're going to use your top coat. So since I'm using Gator Hide, um, that is what I have on my brush here. And then you apply a layer down. I work in sections and place it down and you're gonna press it down and just work through the entire sheet and then go back on top of your decoupage paper and add another layer of that gator hide protection. A little pro tip to help your decoupage paper lay down nicely is to iron it on a low setting first to get the wrinkles from being folded in a package out. For the drawer, I did have to go ahead and remove the handles first before laying the paper down. While my paper was still wet with top coat, I went ahead and poked a hole with my handle screw, but I learned from a, another furniture flipper that it's easier if you just wait for your paper to dry first and then poke your hole and put the handles back on. After the decoupage paper was added, I did two more coats of the gator hide through spraying, let that dry, and then time to put everything together. 
I put the once red, now pink shelf back in and screwed it into place. God. One last little something something before we're done. I'm using Art Alchemy Metallic Wax in the white gold to add a little pizzazz to the decals. And I also applied this to the hinges and the doorknobs. You apply the wax, let it set for a few hours, and then come back in, buff it. After that, this piece is all done. Here's a quick reminder of our before in this dark, dreary entryway cabinet and our after. It is so light and springy now. The colors combined with the floral decoupage paper and the white gold metallic on the handles just come together to give this a completely different spring inspired look. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I definitely enjoyed tapping into my feminine side to make this beautiful piece. I just see it like sitting in someone's she shed. There are lots of other YouTubers participating in this spring fling challenge. Make sure to check out their videos. Don't forget to comment on this video who you think should win because there is a $100 Amazon gift card up for grabs. I will pop the playlist up for all the videos up here on this end screen. That is all I have for you guys today. As always, until next time.